if you don't vacuum under the bed, the clients are going to be able to tell because they'll look, I would. <laughs> You don't really need any special skills to start a cleaning business, but what you will need are great listening skills, ability to summarize and paraphrase your customers' needs. I think that it takes drive. I think that it takes confidence. It takes the ability to bounce back and pivot. You truly have to kind of like doing it. Um, if one doesn't mind cleaning, I think those skill sets will actually come natural. If you can start any company, you can start a cleaning company. It doesn't necessarily take exterior cleaning skills. There's a business mindset that you either have or you don't. But I do think that if you feel it and if you feel the bug and you feel the itch, I don't think that you should think about it. I think that you should just dive in. It's very important to be persistent in the cleaning business. You have to keep trying, you have to keep booking customers. You're going to be riding a roller coaster for a little bit of a while, but it's a fun ride. Honestly, you can start up with literally under $500 just to get started. Because when I started, I didn't have a huge bank account. I just started looking at other companies and just seeing, you know, what worked for them and try to see what worked for us. But literally under $500 is what you need. Not a total, but to initially get started, under $500. You don't need fancy equipment. You just have to start small and then take your money and reinvest it in the company. We started as a window washing company, so you can start out with just the squeegee and soap and a bucket and some really good microfiber cloths. If you were starting with power washing, I think that the cost might be a little more because the equipment costs a little more, so window washing might be a nice you know, foot in the door. Also, you don't have to buy all of your cleaning supplies at once. You can, you know, as long as you have a few things, spray bottles with your cleaning products, a Swiffer, some mops, a vacuum cleaner, that's a good way to start. I started pricing like vacuums and uh, cleaning products because of course the company is green, right? So it's like organically safe products. And usually these products, they cost a little bit more. So I started going to stores like Ross, TJ Maxx, Burlington, and I started seeing that, you know what, this is not as bad as I, as I thought it would be because the products were actually really good products that were really expensive in other stores. So I started piling up different products of, of green and safe. I even made my own like glass cleaner in the beginning. I really tried to find different ways of you know saving money. If you can make your own products, you really can cut the cost of even buying a whole lot of products. You're going to need a reliable vehicle that's quite important. Also, you're going to need uh, some insurance for your business and you're going to need personal insurance like for WorkSafe or WCB in the event that you hurt yourself on the job because you're now self-employed. You have to create your own luck in entrepreneurship. Nothing, there's no such thing as having good luck. You have to make things happen. Look at my eye. You really got to have a really open eye for details. Seeing things what people don't see. I believe in our company, um, we have the eyes to see what most don't see. You need to have a website, number one. You can make that yourself, and I do encourage you learning to make a website if you haven't done so already, because as your business grows, you're going to be modifying that website here and there to reflect your new growth. You can research some of the platforms online. There are quite a few that are just easy step by step. You know, they have templates and colors to choose from, and then you just import pictures and information about your business. So it's not really hard to do. It's kind of fun, actually. Join local networking groups. They're very, very, very low cost per month. And that's like your way of getting your name out in the community. We're a part of two networking groups and they've been huge. You, you now have gained lifelong referrals. Take advantage of social media, Instagram, Nextdoor, on Facebook, for example. Request to join all of the local town groups. So we're in central New Jersey. We've joined every page for every town in really New Jersey. 
So when somebody is saying, hey, I'm looking for this service, we are on that page seeing the post recommending ourselves. And then our friends and family do the same. There are so many free resources. I discovered that there was this cool thing called Thumbtack. I um, created a profile of myself and the company and uploaded pictures of my own house. <laughs> Because I didn't, I didn't have any homes to clean, so I gave my own home a deep cleaning, and I uploaded it on Thumbtack, and then I heard this little notification, bloop, and it said that I had a request, <laughs> and that's how I ended up getting my first cleaning. Actually, it was a, a move out cleaning. It was just a one time cleaning. Honestly, I don't, I don't even know how. I, I reached out, they never answered, and right then and there, you know, you can have like that you know, this is not for me. You know, you get that little slight discouragement, but I, you know, I kept going and got another one. When you're meeting with your customers or even in your, your advertising, your social media um, posts, you should include the information that all of your employees are bondable. That means that they have had a criminal record check and customers will feel safer having you in their home. They know you're not going to try to steal items or things like that. So they'll feel safe with you. We track how um, a customer found us. Our first largest is Google and our second largest lead generator is referrals. So just based off that, if you're starting a company, start supporting other local businesses and then they'll support you in return. Everything about your business is going to be based on networking, who you know, and making other people feel happy and special. The amount of money that you're going to earn really depends on um, whether you're a sole owner and you want to stay that way or whether you have a team of cleaners. And it also depends on what stage your business is at. We give off the vibe that we are a professional high-end company and with that started to bring in high-end customers. When we started to see that trend, we said, well, you know what, let's just raise our minimum. We are catering to the high-end customer. The high-end customer loves us. Let's be the go-to for the high-end customer. When you're just starting out, I don't believe that you need to do this, but if you want to be that company in your town, in your uh, community, or in your state, make that a goal. Like, write it down. Like, okay, right now I'm gonna start out with X amount being the minimum, but within the next three to five years, I wanna be the high-end company in my county. And then I wanna be the high-end company in my state. But you have to focus on it and make it a goal. I actually didn't know that I could make so much money cleaning. I made like over a thousand dollars in one day. That was amazing. It was, I was doing cartwheels. Of course it comes with hard work, but if you're committed, like I say, and you're, you're dedicated to your work and focusing on what your business is, because pricing is one, but when you provide great service, good listener, tips is another. So you treat your customers good and you, those tips will add up. If there's one thing that you can take away from this video, it would be that if you feel like you have the entrepreneurial bug or the entrepreneurial spirit, you were born with it, you felt it since you were young, you're innovative, don't even second guess yourself or think about it or listen to anyone else around you, just do it because you can do it.